Hey hackers, Cosmo here. I know you guys are looking at this footage like, wow, his skin is glowing, it looks so good. It's because I got an actual webcam to record my videos now. Anyways, you didn't come here for a webcam, you came here for my new desktop setup. Just a quick overview, we're gonna cover my Nix OS setup, a Kali Linux, which is not really that rice, and then of course, the Windows machine. Anyways, let's just jump into it. You guys have waited long enough for this. This is what my setup actually looks like. I, I think I spent probably like a good 10 hours probably trying to rice this thing, but it's all right, it's all right. I'm super happy with it. I love the way it looks, the way it feels. Some of the functionality added is pretty neat as well. So yeah, we're just gonna take you for a ride. The first thing I wanna kind of talk about is the actual, you know, system itself. We have NeoFetch running. Well, actually, it's not even NeoFetch anymore. It's, uh, what's it called, FastFetch now? FastFetch, yeah because uh, they discontinued NeoFetch, pretty, pretty lame. This is my Nix OS setup version 25.05. And this, this date right here is actually my birthday, December 19th, uh, I turned 21 like a week ago now, was it the 26th? Yeah, 26th, so. all right, cool. But yeah, happy uh, belated birthday to me. And uh, keep going on here, we have our shell. It says Python 3 is our shell. What it actually means is that I'm using uh, the conch shell. Conch shell is a, it's a Python powered shell. Do print. High, I can print high, one plus three, get four. You can convert like hex numbers real quick. So if you do zero X, like 56, I can see that's 86, really good for binary exploitation stuff. Um, and then of course you can actually use Python stuff. So if when you like import socket and start doing some socket programming right in my terminal, I could if I really wanted to. My desktop environment is cinnamon. It says none, but it's cinnamon. And then I'm using i3 as well. I'm using smart gaps with i3. So if I open up like, uh, another window, my file manager here, you can see the gaps do open when I have like multiple windows open. But by by default, it's just gonna have no gaps. I like this. I know other people may not be as fond of it. A lot of people like the gap on the main window. I like it when I have multiple windows open, but if I have one window open, I want like no gaps. I also have an option to get rid of the gaps. Oh, I actually, Open GIMP, there you go. So that gets rid of the gaps. I don't really use it. I, I like the gaps when I have multiple. Okay, I've been talking about gaps for too long. So we're gonna move on from this. I don't think there's anything else in the NeoFetch I wanna talk about. Uh, using Tmux, some other stuff. So yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty simple. But I have Nix, I've been using Nix for the past, I think four or five months now. And I've, I've been loving it. I absolutely love it. It is so, so great. I don't know if I'll do next videos, but it is, it is a good it is a good operating system. Yeah, before I continue and keep going on through this, I want to let you guys know that the dot files for my config are actually in the description below. So if there's a lot of things you like, the wallpapers, key, guide, key bindings, dot files, etc., it's all in the description below. The other thing I want to talk about is the bar up here. So the bar is i3 bar. I have it so I can toggle the bar on and off. I mean, that's that's pretty much it. I guess I'll say like what I actually have on here. So of course, time, the day, date, the battery, the volume, which you can use your like mouse wheel to change up and down. There's actually no limit on uh, the battery I've set here. So you can just go over 100, over 9,000 if you wanted to. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You can click on it and it'll mute the volume. Click on it, it'll unmute. I'm gonna go down so I can save my ears later. And then CPU disk, and then of course, your IP address, feel free to DDoS this one if you want to. Me and ChatGPT built the script together and it will show you your different IP addresses as you scroll on it. So it shows you Wi-Fi, Ethernet, and I think Ton Zero, which is pretty cool. And then if you click on it, it will actually show you what VPNs you're connected to. So you can see OVPN I'm not connected to, and then my tail scale I am connected to. It's actually pretty cool because if I go to my terminal, and I'll make this a little bit bigger for you guys. Let's see into my VPN directory. And then if I sudo open VPN, the uh, try hack me OVPN file, you can see that it says connected. And if I go back to ton zero, you can actually see that there is an IP address here. And in my terminal as well, I actually do showcase what IP address you're using. So you can see that 10.6.36.116 is also my terminal as well. This is very helpful when you have like reverse shells or other things you're working on during like war games, King of the Hill competitions, CTFs, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, this is really helpful to have. So the last thing on the bar is the slow thing that tells you what app you're using right now. So you can see Kitty is right here. If I move my mouse to the monitor with OBS, you'll see OBS appear right there. And then if I go on like no workspace, it just disappears. 
and then on the left side i actually have the workspaces i have set up so i, I guess i'll i'll walk you through what workspaces i use i know everyone organizes the workspaces a little bit differently but for me and my workflow i'll show you what i do feel free to leave any tips or i would love to hear how you guys organize your workspaces so the first workspace is obsidian of course i always have obsidian as the first one because i have my calendar here i have notes whatever i use obsidian a lot so i always have a quote here i I'd usually change the quote every once in a while this is something i heard uh i think randy the other youtuber he makes like video games and stuff so i thought it was kind of funny just general stuff for my to-do list stuff i'm working in cyber and development other stuff cool if you guys are actually curious about obsidian and some stuff like that i do have a video that showcases how i take notes with obsidian and then i have a video coming out on how to write obsidian and make it look as pretty and stuff as it does on my computer so if you want to see that make sure to subscribe leave notifications on so you'll be notified of when that comes out you can also join the discord i usually annoy you guys over there with what i'm doing so either one past that in workspace 2 is my firefox my firefox i love firefox this is a great browser a lot of people have been telling me hey you should use the libre wolf libre wolf is a great alternative it is a great alternative lots of privacy features that even firefox does not have the only thing is i need to sync my bookmarks uh these these little things up here if you guys want to make your you know firefox look like this i have a web extension here i think it's called ta yeah tabless manage extension so this is tabless this is what's making my obsidian or my excuse me my firefox look so pretty if you guys are wondering what actual theme i'm using it's called solarized asaka v6.5 of course i have this other thing it's called stylus and it basically you know rice's websites you're on i saw a youtube video pop up about it which is pretty cool but yeah, that's that's Firefox. Nothing too crazy going on here. So I'll, I'll move past this and we'll get to the terminal. I'm sure this is probably the fact or the part of the video most of you guys will be interested in is like, how do I have my terminal set up? I don't know if there's anything crazy that I haven't mentioned already other than the fact that you know I'm using conch shell and stuff. Some cool things I put in here is that if I CD into like a Git directory like Nix, my shell will show what actual branch you're in so you can see it shows the main branch right here. And then I also have the ability to show what virtual environment I'm using. So I have a virtual environment called www. It has a bunch of web Python libraries installed on it. I can just see what Python environment that I'm using. If you guys are actually interested in what I'm using to like manage all these virtual environments, it's called Vox. Like you can use it to basically list your environments. You can create other environments and they're not tied to any directory. So you can use it anywhere. It's part of the conch shell. So I think if you want to use Vox, you have to use the conch shell. I could be wrong on that, but as far as I'm aware, um, and yeah, you can do like box deactivate, and then it'll deactivate your virtual environment. So it's pretty cool. If you guys are interested in picking that up, definitely check it out. I guess the other thing that people are going to be interested in is my NeoVim setup. So I'll go ahead and CD into my actual website directory, and then I'll be in here. This is my NeoVim setup. You guys can see Cosmodium CS right across the screen. And then you can see I have some basic functionality here to open files, create new files, look at my Obsidian Vault through NeoVim, recently used files, some, some other stuff like that. My airline, like the little bar that goes across the bottom is transparent. I just think it looks sick. I'll go ahead and open like, the views.py for example you can just see what the editor usually looks like of some other things in here i have like harpoon in here i have like a fussy finder to open files and to search files like hello you can see these are all the files with the word hello in them i have a floating terminal in here so if i want to do some other development stuff in here i can really easily the one thing i i should mention with this is that my neovim is actually using something called NixVim. So Nix has a way to build your config files through Nix instead of using the individual config files itself. It's a great way to manage it. It's stuff like Home Manager and all this other stuff. If you're familiar with Nix, then you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, I apologize. But basically, my NeoVim config is built through my Nix config. Uh, workspace 4 is basically like a workflow or workspace it's it isn't nothing specific per se it's just if i'm working on stuff like if i have a bunch of windows open or whatever uh, workspace 5 is an office workspace so if i'm working with like gimp LibreOffice, if i'm editing a video stuff like that workspace 6 is a file explorer workspace because i usually have to work with files pretty often workspace 7 okay so to explain this i'm going to open a render so a render so to get a better understanding of my monitor layout, right? You can see 
one five is the one you guys are looking at right now. Then to the left of that is my laptop, which is DP one. And then to the left of that is my other monitor one six. So workspace seven by default opens up on one six. And here I have a bunch of media. It's basically the point of it. So if I'm watching YouTube, Netflix, Spotify, Discord, like a bunch, any, every time I'm working with media, it will automatically open on that monitor. So that way I can keep my focus on these two monitors and then have like distractions on that third monitor. So it's pretty helpful for me when I'm working, if I just want to watch some YouTube or whatever. I have a desk setup video coming out. So if you check that out, then you'll, you'll have a better conceptual understanding of what I'm talking about as well. So Workspace Zero opens up on this monitor or the laptop right here. And Workspace Zero is just for OBS and recording and stuff like that. The only two workspaces left is workspace eight and nine, which is for my Linux VM and my Windows VM. So I'll quickly show you guys my Linux and uh, Windows setups. For Linux, the only Linux machine I use other than my main Nix OS machine is Kali Linux, just because I do a lot of hacking. Obviously, you guys, <laughs> it's a cybersecurity channel, so I think that should make sense. This is what my Kali box looks like. It's nothing crazy. It's honestly pretty similar to what my old setup used to look like. It's the same shell, conch shell. But yeah, this is the machine I use for hacking stuff I might update the rice I don't really like the way it looks to be entirely honest so maybe one day I'll kind of go back through here but honestly because I don't use it so much to like do work in, I just use it every time I'm doing like hack the box or track me and stuff then that's why I have it here and then the last thing is my Windows machine I think you guys will be more curious on my Windows machine here. This is a machine I use for my malware development stuff. So every time I do malware development on Windows, I'm pretty much using this machine. I have a separate machine for like the dynamic malware analysis stuff because I also use this main Windows machine for static malware analysis, or I even use my Nix OS for static malware analysis as well. But this machine is mostly malware development. So typical black wallpaper, with you know my little avatar on here if you guys want to know like what specific applications i use on my malware development setup i actually have a video called tools for malware development which covers pretty much all the tools i'm using on this virtual machine i guess i'll just show you guys the development tools i use so i have so this is visual studio codium vs codium codium is just an open source version of vs code so it's pretty much the same thing it's just a little bit more privacy respecting so that's why i've chosen to use it i'm using a Doki theme. I forgot the specific name of the Doki theme that I'm using. It's called Doki Me DR Abuki. So if you want to use that theme, that's the theme I'm using if you guys are curious. If you guys are looking at like extensions and stuff that I'm using, I'll like flip through them here. But honestly, that other video goes way more in depth about the tools, the extensions, and all that stuff that I use. So I won't go too, too far into this one. The only other thing I think that's worth covering on my Windows machine is the Visual Studio. So Visual Studio I use for most of my malware stuff or like seed development stuff as well. Uh, I've been working through Maldev Academy. It's a pretty interesting course. So this is just some random script from the course, I think. And the extensions that I use on Visual Studio I only have two. The only two that I use are, it's the Mayu Kai theme. I think this is also the one that uh, Crow uses. I saw him using it. That was pretty cool. And then uh, VS Vim, because I use Vim so much. I like to have the key bindings in Vim. I also have the Vim key bindings on my VS Codium. So it, it, it's across the board. Hopefully this is something you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys use. I would love, love to see how your setup differs from mine and all that. Other than that, I will leave you guys to it. So make sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe, check out some of the other videos we have. And uh, yeah, happy new year. If you enjoy content like this, then you will absolutely love the Happy Hacker site plan. For just $7 a month, you get access to exclusive videos, articles, courses, and learning resources, all created just for you. But wait! More. You'll also be able to freely access our custom built malware, tools, payloads, and suites. So if you're ready to level up from a newbie to a pro, head over to cosmodiumcs.com forward slash support and check it out today.